don't worry, trust, trust the pro. I mean, it still does look like a potato sack, but apparently my dream dress is in fact a potato sack. Alexis Sunshine 83, it's always sunny here. Hey Sunshiners, Alexis Sunshine 83 right here. So back in August, I had made a YouTube short where I thrift flipped a comforter into my dream dress in 24 hours. And a lot of you seem to really enjoy that. And I had gotten comments saying that you would love to see a longer like YouTube version. Literally since August, I have been searching for the perfect comforter or bed sheet or duvet cover where I could make this dress again. It was either like the comforter was not the right size or it just was a pattern that I didn't particularly love. Obviously you can totally make this dress just with normal fabric from the fabric store, but I really wanted to make it with a secondhand comforter just because it's fun. Since I have been searching and very much failing on trying to find this comforter, I decided to go on Poshmark and search for comforters and quilts. Obviously, I would have loved to go into a thrift store and get one, but it's still secondhand, so I'm still calling it a thrift flip. So I ended up going on there and finding this beautiful quilt. Like, look at how absolutely gorgeous. And I ended up having $20 in Poshmark credit and this quilt was $20, which means I only had to pay for shipping. I am really happy that I have a quilt this time just because I feel like if it's a little mismatch, it's okay because it already kind of has that vibe. So let's finally get into thrift flipping this quilt into a super cute dress. <laughs> the supplies you'll need is elastic, thread, obviously, and this magical sewing loop turner, which we will be talking about that a little bit later. The pattern I'll be using is this baby, which is literally the easiest pattern ever. And this is what the full quilt looks like in all its glory. Now, unfortunately, I actually had to buy a new one of this pattern because when we moved, I lost it and this baby is quite hard to come by or at least it was like a month ago when I was trying to buy it for this video. I actually ended up getting this one from Etsy because on Joanne Fabrics it was like completely sold out. Hopefully it isn't and if you want to get your hands on it it will be there but yes I first have to cut out my pattern before I can actually cut out my fabric. Cutting out the pattern and then cutting out the fabric is honestly the part i hate the most you spend all this time preparing and yet all you have to show for it is cut out pieces i'm pretty sure this ended up taking me like a full hour the first time i did this i definitely like googled what everything meant like cut on folds which i know sounds really silly but i had no idea what that meant and all the different like symbols and stuff and i'm not gonna lie i'll probably have to google some instructions of what they mean uh, even in this video because again, I am not a professional, but I feel like that shouldn't stop you from trying. Another reason I liked using a comforter or a quill for this is usually it's already thick enough so it's not going to be see-through and then you don't have to worry about sewing in a lining which anything to make my job easier I am totally down for. Also I've never sewn in like a lining and I know I will have to tackle that at some point but Today is not that day that I'm going to do that. So after all that cutting, I have all together nine pieces. The first thing we're gonna do is take our front piece, which the nice part is both sides are honestly great. So it really doesn't matter which side I choose, but we are going to gather some of it to kind of create this like gathering effect. Not exactly like that, but I'm going to pin that just in the front and then sew it, pull it, and then take the backing, which is this one, and sew it to the sides of that. I like to kind of describe this dress as like a potato sack, but in a good way. <laughs> so I just sewed the two lines without back stitching, so I could then gather the thread to bring in that fabric. And I wish I had gathered a little bit more fabric because I did have like an excess and it didn't match with eventually you will see the top band that I end up sewing 
this part too. And so when I ended up doing that, I gathered a lot more, almost creating like a pleated look to the dress to just bring in again that fabric more. Once that was done, I laid the front and back pieces together and pinned along the sides. Since again, it's a quilt, there was no need to try and line up the pattern on it, or at least for me, I don't mind it looking like even more mismatched. I did in fact, uh, well, I'm not gonna show you. I did in fact poke myself and now I'm bleeding. Yay, sewing. Once I patched up my battle wound, I sewed along both sides. I did want to mention whenever I speed up footage of me sewing, it looks like I'm pulling really hard on the fabric, but I promise I was just guiding it through slowly, not pulling, not any of that. I don't want any expert sewers coming for me. Well, I feel like anyone that knows how to sew will be roasting me in the comments no matter what though, which I give you permission because I am a newbie, but at least with that, I am, I am not pulling the fabric. <laughs> okay, we finished our like main part and I'm really excited. It's going very well, which I shouldn't have said that. Again, very much right now looks like a potato sack, but don't worry, trust that's the problem. I mean, it still does look like a potato sack, but apparently my dream dress is in fact a potato sack. I actually totally forgot the back piece needs to have a facing in there to be able to put in the elastic. And because the quilt is quite thick, I feel like I don't need to do a lining, but then because of it being a quilt, it already has stitching in there. So I can't just like slide an elastic in like I was able to do with my comforter. So the pillowcases have just like a normal fabric on the back, just a really thin fabric. So I'm just gonna sew it onto the back piece, weave a little hole. So then when I get to that, I can just put the elastic in there. And then that way I'll be able to sew the front and back pieces together i think that's how it goes now i'm going to take the front piece and then the back piece and sew them together on to day two where i started with hemming the top of the top band which since it's a quilt and there's a normal seam looking things going on throughout it having the hem be visible wasn't a big deal but next time i definitely should have followed the pattern to put a lining at least at the top band to fold it so there wasn't like a seam that was visible now that we have finished with the band which I definitely should have done it a little bit differently because obviously now you can like see the seam, which you're not supposed to. I, I did it incorrectly with the second layer, but oh well. Now I'm going to attach it to the top part of the dress, but I have to do it inside out, like inside out and then upside down. These are the moments where you're like, okay, don't think too hard about it because it's really not that difficult but the more you try to think about it of like wait it has to be inside out but then like what 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 does that even mean so i'm gonna try and not do that basically taking this is the front part i'm gonna go like that and then this is the back and i'm going to sew these together so then it comes up like that Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> I am just lining up the cutouts that I made with a pattern when I cut out the, well, I didn't make them. The pattern told me to make it uh, when I had like cut out the fabric so I can pin it correctly, which I didn't even realize that's what it was for. I know I should probably take a sewing class, at least one, maybe I'll get to that. <laughs> like I said, when the dress is put with the right side up, the top piece will fold over so it then won't show any of the seams and the part that I am sewing. I am just making a mark on the sides of the back just for where the like added fabric is for the back band. Honestly, this is not a tutorial. I mean, I'm sure you all knew that. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, so I cannot teach you anything, but okay. There's a band in the back and the elastic is gonna have to go in there, but there obviously needs to be an opening. And I know myself and I'm going to forget and end up closing it shut. So I'm just putting a dot. You won't see it, so it doesn't matter. And I marked it on the wrong side. <laughs> 
I marked it on the front side instead of the back. See, that's just what I always end up doing. Definitely messed up on some of the pleating, like you can see the thread, but again, I'm hoping just because of like the way that the dress looks, it'll be okay. But this is how it should be at the top. It is now time to do the straps, which the straps are like my favorite part about this specific pattern. You know, I love a good bow. And so basically what we do is we have our back straps and we basically fold it, but out wrong side up. So like this is, oh, I'm not focused, okay. So this is the wrong side and I'm gonna stitch it all together, leave an opening at the bottom. And so basically it's gonna be like this, but an opening. And we're gonna take my handy dandy, where is it? This little tool where basically you like slide it in and then it like hooks onto it and then it will fold to the right side so then you don't have any seams or anything. This is the coolest thing ever. There were four straps all together, so I folded each in half and then sewed along. Again, making sure there's enough room of the visible top strap to be able to fold it inside out. The bottom of the strap doesn't need to be fully closed since it's going to be sewn to the top band that we just connected to the dress. Now taking our one strap, we take this little thing. It has basically like a little hook and you put it through and you pull it down and it just, darn it. Worst part is when it gets unhooked and you're like, oh, so close. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. Oh, so, so cool. And then like this extra bit, that's all like, ugh. you just kind of tuck it in. Pretend it doesn't exist. I tried to measure to see where to put the straps, but I decided to just try it on and then mark with a pen. Although it does end up a bit wonky on one side, I will admit. So definitely measure after you've pinned them to verify the placement. The first strap I did, I actually sewed it on the opposite side of the band. So when it would be facing out, it like pulled the dress up in the wrong way. So I did have to cut it out and redo it, but I got the hang of it after that and having the hem at the top band ended up working because I decided to sew at the bottom of the strap and then maybe like an inch or two above just to make sure it kept the top band up. We finished with the straps. You know, did I mess up and have to redo one of them? Yes, but keep moving. It is now for the elastic that goes in the back which should do uh, i left the two openings if you remember and i'm gonna try to put this elastic and then basically sew it on both sides so then it it's smaller elastic has been sewn in there. So it creates a little bit of a ruffle and a little bit of shape kind of. And then the last thing I need to do is just sew the hem, which before that I do that, let me just see where it hits right now. So hits a little bit above my knees. I want it to be a good amount just cause the other one was a little bit too long at first. The pattern says to hem the bottom five eighths, but it was too long the last time. And because of the shape of the dress, I think it needs more leg showing. So I measured it based on the length of another dress I have and then compared it to the previous one that I made. I can always make it longer or shorter if I want. So I didn't cut off the excess because I honestly didn't want to make it too short and be like unwearable. So after honestly 24 hours, I sewed the last bit of the dress. And here she is, quilted 
potato sack dress. I love it. I think it came out really good. I prefer it over the other one I made just because I feel like with it being from a quilt, it really like holds its shape and it's just really fun to look at. I know so many people are probably going to hate it and that it doesn't have honestly really any shape, but that's what I kind of loved about doing this project is if you are new to sewing, making shape or I guess even just making like the bodice can be very overwhelming and again I am not a professional I'm very much in the beginning stages of my sewing journey even though I've been trying to sew for like five years <laughs> I realized personally it is much better for me to start very like basic and have not that much shape but still make something to like build my confidence and learn how to do different things with the sewing machine which again is why I did want to film me making this dress because I feel like it's honestly perfect for any new sewer. Now, although, like I said, I do really like how the dress came out, there definitely are some things I wish I would have done differently. And the first thing is to make longer straps. I made the straps based on the length that the pattern had said, but I wish I would have done double the length just because with it being a quilted material, it's quite thick. And so I can really only tie just like these knots, which, really ruins the whole look to the dress. Like it's just too thick and there's not enough of it to make a cute bow. So I'm not sure what I wanna do. I may just make a bow with the excess fabric and then like safety pin it on here just because again, that's like the best part about it. The next thing is the elastic in the back. I actually made it shorter than even the pattern had said to do. And I still feel like I could have made it shorter. It's just not giving, I, it's not that I wanted a ruffle look and it's not that it even has a ruffle look on the like example photo, but I just feel like it's not really giving anything in the back. So I wish I just would have made the elastic a little bit smaller and I do have enough room so it totally still would have fit in everything but yeah other than that I feel like this was a success I do also have a lot of extra quilts which is awesome I'm thinking about maybe making a top with it because there's not enough fabric to make like a two-piece or a jacket or like a dress or something like that and also like don't believe in my own skills to try to do any of that but I feel like I could make a top out of it let me know in the comments if you think I should thank you all for watching and hopefully it inspired you to either do a thrift flip on something that you already own or that you find at the thrift store and give it a new life which if you do like thrifting and secondhand fashion then make sure to subscribe right down below and hit the little bell to be notified every time I make a new video and also don't forget to follow me on Instagram which is Alex and Shine 83. I will see you in my next video and I hope you have a super sunny day. Bye!